Today we want to talk about binary eutectic systems. Uh, let's begin just by looking at an example binary eutectic system. So remember from the discussion that we had on isomorphous, uh, bi rather binary isomorphous phase diagrams, that binary just meant we had two components. And in this case, we also have two components. This is a copper silver system. Uh, on the x-axis, you're seeing weight percent silver. And then of course, the y-axis, you're looking at temperature. If you remember from the binary isomorphous system, uh, there existed one solid phase, we called it alpha, and there was one liquid phase, we called it L, and then there was this uh, phase region alpha plus L. Well, we still have those same regions in the, in the binary eutectic system. So there we have alpha, we have our liquid, and then we have liquid plus alpha, all right? So all that's uh, the same. The, the primary, uh, one of the features that distinguishes a binary eutectic system from a binary isomorphous system is that there are two solid phases. So we don't just have alpha, we now also have beta. And that also gives us some additional phase regions. So we, we have a beta plus liquid. And we also now have this large region uh, where we have two phases uh, combined together. So this would be the alpha plus beta uh, phases. Remember that alpha itself is a solid solution of silver and copper, and beta is a solid solution of silver and copper. So there are two separate phases. Each contains silver and copper, but they're, they're uh, combined together in this single uh, solid material. So what we can also see is that these two solid phases plus a liquid phase give us six phase regions. So again, alpha, liquid plus alpha, liquid, liquid plus beta, beta, and alpha plus beta. So the reason that we call it a eutectic system is because of what's called a eutectic reaction. So the eutectic reaction is, is just the the reaction that occurs at, at this point at 71.9 weight percent in this system where we have alpha plus beta, let's say we're heating it up. So we, we heat up along this curve. And at this point, both alpha and beta melt and become a liquid. In contrast, if we were in a liquid um, state and we were cooling down, as soon as we cross this point, the liquid would be would then separate into alpha and beta. So that that is what makes the system uh, what's called a eutectic. That's a re eutectic reaction where alpha and beta go to liquid or liquid goes to alpha and beta. OK, so let's work through some definitions now. Um, the first the first is a uh, one that we've seen already from the isomorphous uh, phase diagrams uh, the liquidus line that just separates uh, the region of pure liquid from where a uh, solid begins to precipitate out so in this particular case the liquidus line uh, is going to be that'll be one of them and that will be the other here so there's those two liquidus lines and we'll just go ahead and write liquidus Okay. The other uh, definition is also one that's uh, we've seen before, the solidus line, and that's the boundary where uh, some of the solid begins to melt. So if I'm in this alpha region and I cross this boundary, it becomes liquid plus alpha. So so there there's a solidus line, and it's only remember from this re this part right. It's only from this region to this line, right? And then we have a similar region over on the beta side that is this region right along here, okay? So there are solidus lines there. So, And then there's another solidus line on this uh, diagram. If we're in the alpha beta region and we raise the temperature above, in this case, 779 degrees C, then we'll either go to liquid plus alpha, liquid or liquid plus beta. So in any event, it's, 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 uh, the solid begins to melt at that temperature. And so actually that line there represents a solidus line as well. Okay. And the, 
another third definition. This is a new one, uh, and it's it's called the Solvus line, and it's the boundary of solid solid solubility. So the easiest way to think of this is if um, let me switch colors here. And if I'm sitting at, let's say, 95% uh, weight percent silver in this region, and I'm heating it up, uh, we're heating it up, and I cross that boundary, it's going to, now I no longer have alpha that can be uh, with the beta. I go to a full beta region. So that line here is what's called a solvus line. So no liquid is being formed, but um, but the alpha beta uh, um, material has to go to beta. And we could have a similar reaction here along this boundary. And so that also is a solvus line. OK, so those are a, a few definitions. Let's go ahead and, and uh, move forward to a couple more. So in this case, um, the, the, one of the features we've kind of already talked about is called the eutectic point. Um, and the, it's just the point where the liquidus lines meet. It's the point where the, the um, eutectic reaction occurs. So it's going to become an important point, though, as we uh, try to talk about what microstructures develop in these uh, eutectic systems. Okay, uh, we also have uh, what's called the eutectic composition, and that's very simply just the composition at this eutectic point. So uh, when you look at that point, whatever the composition is, that's the eutectic composition. And similarly, we have what's called a eutectic temperature. Um, so those are some, some uh, main definitions that, that we need to have uh, in our toolbox as we go forward to, to then talk about uh, microstructure.